Okay, we're here in Los Angeles, uh, about three days away from Spence Quarter at the Staples Center. Richard, um, good seeing you, it's been a minute. Um, how's everything? Just update us on what's going on in your end. Oh, everything well. Uh, very excited to be here in LA. Saturday night, Staples Center is going to be the capital of boxing uh, in the world again. Uh, a huge fight, the biggest fight uh, in the welterweight division uh, with Spence and with Porter. But really with Spence, as I, uh, if you remember what I said after the last time he fought uh, at Dallas Cowboys Stadium, uh, after the fight with Mikey Garcia, I said we have a new era, we have a new king, and his name is Errol Spence. And now to see him come back uh, to defend that crown, not only the crown is the best welterweight, but really the crown is the best fighter pound for pound in the world, and to do it against somebody like Sean Porter just shows you what Errol Spence is all about. I mean, I've known Porter from the beginning, uh, promoted most of his fights. Uh, he is he, he has a will to win. He has the style to win. So we're gonna we're gonna see on Saturday night how good Spence really is. Uh, and uh, it's it's a fascinating matchup. And uh, kudos to both fighters uh, for taking on that challenge. Yeah, uh, what does a win do for Spence? What does a win do for uh, As a promoter yourself, how would you move forward with the win with either fighter? Well, I think with Spence you have uh, if he if if he if he does what he did in the Garcia fight. Uh, uh, he cannot be denied. Even I think his harshest critics would have to say Errol Spence is today pound for pound the best fighter in the world because there is no other fighter in the sport right now who has these kind of names back to back on his resume. So I think a win over Sean Porter just cements uh, Spence's reputation as pound for pound the best fighter. Of course, a win for Sean Porter is a game changer. Uh, suddenly, Sean Porter will be the man at 147 and all the doors will be open and there are so many doors, so many fights uh, which can be had. It's a loaded division. Uh, it's exciting to be a fight fan and it's exciting for these guys to be welterweights and the good news is these guys all want to fight each other. They're, you don't hear one saying, no, I don't want to fight this guy or I don't want to fight that guy. And the good news is as well that 90%, uh, 95% of all welterweights that matter are under the PBC umbrella so it's very easy to get these fights done um, you see as well on how quickly they are becoming household names you see uh, the numbers Fox is delivering for the shoulder programming and that's more than than than, than, than any other platforms combined uh, almost 800,000 people watching and uh, 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 you know the, the, the all-access show on, on Fox I mean it's just unbelievable you look at these numbers and the commitment Fox has put behind so very happy for these fighters and I expect huge turnout uh, in fact, Staples Center is virtually sold out for Saturday night and that's always a good sign on how the pay-per-view will do. I expect huge numbers on the pay-per-view and uh, I'm very happy for, for Spence and as I said, we are in a new, in a new era, it's the Errol Spence area, but um, we have with Sean Porter somebody who has something to say about that as well, and I'm sure you will. We're in the new era, but it looks like Manny Pacquiao still the ultimate fight here for both fighters. That's, that's the fight we both won, uh, the winner. Uh, what do you make of Manny Pacquiao being here, the, the, the reward for the winner? Manny Pacquiao still fighting at that level to work guys, you guys in the prime, like Spence and Porter, want to fight Manny Pacquiao, so he's a great fighter. He's a good fighter. Well, he's a legend, and uh, these young guys want to fight the legend and want to beat the legend. We've seen that. It's like an old story in boxing, you always see that, you know, you see the young upcoming guys wanting to fight the legends, the guys they've watched growing up uh, and they want to, like we saw it with Oscar when he fought Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. Uh, we've seen it with, um, with, uh, with, with Bernard Hopkins uh, when you had a young guy back then Kelly Pavlik undefeated coming up wanting to fight the legend and guess what the legend won so sometimes you know the legend turns back the clock and that makes it that exciting I think what we've seen you in know, the last Pacquiao right fight here. we've seen the legend turning back the clock I mean let's face it that was one of the best Pacquiao performances I have sees, seen so I think that Manny Pacquiao even at this point at this stage in his career is still very very competitive with anyone 
one of these fighters. Yeah, and I want to drift off too much from the PBC subject, but you brought it up, Oscar De La Hoya. If you keep in your ears to uh, what's going on with him and his promotion, Canelo, the Wrangler situation, can you just uh, comment on, as a promoter, how, how to deal with those kind of situations? How would you feel about it? Well, you know, I think uh, they, he solved his issues with Ryan Garcia. I don't really know what the issues are with Canelo. So I don't really, you know, it has been so many years ago. So I, it's in my in my back view mirror and I wish him the best, you know. Uh, you know, in, and in, in boxing, it's like you have your ups and you have your downs and that's just the nature of the sport. But it's not just in boxing, it's in any sport and in any business you are involved in. Frankly, in any walk of life, uh, you have your ups and you have your downs, you have your good days and you have your bad days. And I think Oscar had some bad days and, uh, you know, again, I, I have absolutely nothing negative to say about it. Uh, speaking of bad days, it looks like Showtime could be facing some bad days. Uh, how do you feel about Showtime heading into the future and then passing up on the Wilder, um, the Wilder Ortiz rematch? I think really well, I think Showtime uh, has been a, st a stable for boxing. They are very passionate about the sport. I think they've 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 televised so many great fights over such a long period of time. So you know, you uh, just as I said before, you get some and you you lose some. Uh, they didn't they didn't for whatever reason they didn't get or didn't want this fight I don't know what the case is but uh, be it as it is uh, I'm sure uh, there will be other great fights on Showtime uh, there's so many great fights which are happening right now I mean I've never seen in the last 20 years the volume of fights you're seeing almost every weekend and good fights you know so I'm sure there's going to be some great fights for Showtime as well Steven is an experienced guy and I'm sure they're going to be they, they, they're going to be they're going to be just well a boxing business, uh, a boxing franchise, a boxing platform, a boxing network doesn't depend on one fighter or one fighter. It really is like the sport. And if you're committed to the sport and you do a good job, I'm sure they'll be okay. Um, great fight, Inoue versus Benito Donaire. Just talk to us about that. I know you've been... Um yeah, you know, I mean, look, the, his nickname, you know, his nickname is The Monster, but uh, I've got, got some news for you. You know who the real monster is? The real monster at 118 pounds is Nonito Donaire. So it's going to be monster against monster, and let's see who will be the biggest monster uh, that night uh, in Japan. Uh, I mean, Donaire is fired up, uh, he's training hard. Uh, that's the fight he wanted from the very beginning. Uh, that's what he told me when he entered the tournament. He's happy it comes to it because he's seen flaws uh, in uh, uh, Inoue's uh, uh, arsenal and style, which he tends to fully exploit. And so I think it's going to be one of those nights where you can't blink. Honestly, whoever lands first is going to win that fight because we know both are big punches. And at 118, I said it since day one when Nonito Donaire entered that tournament. At 118, Nonito Donaire is the man to beat. Uh, Richard, let me ask you a question. Uh, let's just say Errol Spence wins this fight. He, he wins this fight by knockout. Do you still think he needs Crawford on his resume to be legitimized as number one pound man? Where does Crawford fit in the equation? Well, well you know, you know what I what I said at the last Spence fight against Mikey Garcia. And, you know, Mikey's a friend of mine. I, I I think Mikey is and still is pound for pound in most people's top ten. So he's one of the most talented and most skillful fighters. But what we saw that night at the Dallas Cowboys Stadium was something which I have really only seen in my in my lifetime as a boxing fan and promoter once and that is a fighter Errol Spence making another fighter another great fighter make ordinary and who comes to mind who fights the best out there and made them look ordinary Floyd Mayweather that's the kind of performance I saw that night at Dallas Cowboys Stadium. That's why at the post-fight press conference, I proclaimed that that wasn't just the fight, but it was the coronation. It was the coronation in Dallas of Errol Spence as pound for pound the best fighter in the world. Now, this is a test. And this is a real test because I know Sean Porter and I know how difficult of a style Sean Porter is, how determined he is, how good he is. Uh, and he is going to come. He's going to come to fight, and he's going to give the biggest test in Errol Spence's career. And we are going to see on Saturday night 
Will Errol Spence pass that test or is Sean Porter too much? Yeah, saying that this has been rich. Uh, do you think Mikey should go down in weight and stay and stop fighting a higher weight? Or? Well, look, I mean, Mike. Nah, with? look, Mikey has. Mikey wants the biggest fights, and if the biggest fight's at 140, he should go and fight the biggest fight at 140. And if the fight is at 147, then let him go to 47. I mean, look, I'd love to see, for example, the winner of this fight fighting Danny Garcia, winner of the of of uh, Porter and Spence. Fight Danny Garcia and have have Mikey have Mikey Garcia fight uh, Manny Pacquiao. Richard, quick question. That's I would love to see that setup. Richard, quick question. Do you think that Errol Spence needs to beat Sean Porter by KO in order to no. convert the boxing hey. experts to believe that he is one of the top three pound for pound fighters in the world? How many? He's not being mentioned. No, it's no. How, how, many, how many? How many? How many people? How many people did Floyd Mayweather knock out? In his in in the stretch from 2007 on, when he did all of these fights, became the highest paid athlete in the world. How many guys did he knock out? He made great fighters look ordinary. That's what Floyd Mayweather. That's what Floyd Mayweather did. And I believe that we might be on the cusp to have, and we're going to see that on Saturday night to see not the next Floyd Mayweather but the first Errol Spence uh, and man I can't wait to see how is he gonna look against somebody as strong and as big and as difficult in a style like Sean Porter is is he too much for him Sean Porter I don't know it's the biggest fight for Errol Spence and I can't wait to see on how or if he's going to pass the test so I think they're gonna be some really really interesting post-fight interviews about what happened in that fight. It's must-see.